So, in the last class, I have discussed uh, about the design of a, of a wrapped foundation resting on clay. And today, uh, in the, that class, I have uh, calculated the bearing capacity and the immediate settlement. And today, I will calculate the consolidation settlement. And before that, uh, there is a, a small change in the value that was given in the last problem. So, what is that? So, this was the problem. So, uh, the change is that, so this uh, was taken 25 uh, kilo Newton per meter square, actually it is 35 kilo Newton per meter square. So, please change that. So, the C u for the second layer is 35 kilo Newton per meter square. Okay. So, still uh, that is the lowest uh, C u that among the all layers. So, this value is 35 kilo Newton per meter square that is the change. So, that is why uh, during the calculation of uh, C u average, I have taken this will be the 35 kilo Newton per meter square. So, this will be 35 into 8. So, then this value will be 45.6. So, just correct that this will be 35 kilo Newton per meter square. And another thing is that, that in n q term, if I use 46.7, then this will be also change. This will be 280.2 kilo Newton per meter square. So, if I use 46 point, uh, 45.6 kilo Newton per meter square. But, if I take, if we take the lowest C u that is 35 kilo Newton per meter square, then the Q n Q will be 45.6 into 35 that will be equal to 215 kilo Newton per meter square. So, here uh, you can see that if I take the lowest u value, because that is the, um, the maximum zone of the soil that is influenced by this foundation is the second layer which is 8 meter and their c u is the lowest and that c u is the 35 kilo Newton per meter square, then it will be 215. But if I take the weighted average, then it will be 45.6. So, now if I take the 215, then factor of safety is 4.7, which is quite high. So, and if I take 46, obviously that will be higher. So, that is why I have taken the lowest value, but because that is uh, safe, and then uh, this is greater than 2.5. So, it is safe, but it is uh, over safe. So, but uh, let us see whether it is uh, how much shape it is against settle settlement. So, that that is why I have uh, calculated the uh, immediate settlement also and immediate settlement is coming out to be 8.2 millimeter and then uh, we will go for the consolidation settlement that is. consolidation settlement. Okay. So, in the consolidation settlement, what uh, the expression is same that is uh, S c is equal to C c 1 plus E 0 H log 10 P 0 bar plus del P divided by P 0 bar. And so, in this problem, so, again I am just quickly explaining that we have to take the points the middle of this layer. This is A point, this is B point, this is C point and this layer is up to 6.5. So, this is D point. Okay. So, this point is distance of this point from this uh, center is 1.25. 1.25 from this base of the footing and this one is 4 meter and this one is also 4 meter because these are the thickness is 8 meter. Here it is 6.5 is the thickness. So, this will be D is 
six point five divided by two. Okay. So now uh, similarly, I am just calculating the stresses at different point. So at point A, so the value will be the P zero value will be your one point five into eighteen plus one point two five. 18 minus 10. Okay, so that is equal to 37 kilo newton per meter square. And del P, the same process I will use. That is 46.1 because my Q n is 46.1 into 12.5 cross 12.5 divided by 12.5. Plus 1.25, 1.25 into 12.5 plus 1.25. Okay, so that will be equal to 38.1 kilo newton per meter square. Similarly, at point B, P zero bar. Will be 1.5 into 18 plus 2.5 into 18 minus 10. Then it is 4 meter. Okay, so and unit weight is 18. So this will be plus 4 into 18 minus 10. That is equal to 79 kilo newton per Meter square and del P is equal to forty six point one into twelve point five square divided by twelve point five plus two point five plus four. That is square. I am taking square because it's a it's a square foundation. So that is equal to nineteen point nine five. Kilo newton per meter square, and point at point C, the value is P zero bar is equal to one point five into eighteen plus two point five into eighteen minus ten plus this will be the eight. Into 18 minus 10. Then for the third layer, it is up to 4. Then 19 minus 10, so that is equal to 147 kilo newton per meter square. And del P is equal to 46.1 into 12.5 whole square divided by 12.5. Then plus 2.5. Then the total thickness will be the C point. The C point thickness is 2.5 plus 8 plus 4. Okay, to C point position. So 2.5 plus 8 plus 4. Okay, and that is square. So that will be 9.9 kilonewton per. Meter square. Similarly, I can go for the next layer at point D. The P zero bar is equal to one point five into eighteen plus two point five into eighteen minus ten. Plus eight into eighteen minus ten, then plus eight into nineteen minus ten, plus three point two five into nineteen minus ten. Three point two five. It is the six point five divided by two. So that is two one two point two five. Kilo newton per meter square, and similarly the del P value is 
twenty six point one into twelve point five square divided by twelve point five plus twenty one point seven five square twenty one point seven five how it is coming because the position of d point is twenty one point seven five meter from the base of the foundation because this is two point five eight meter eight meter and three point two five meter so that is total twenty one point seven five meter okay from the base of the foundation six point one four kilo newton per meter square now the pc value uncorrected i can write for the first layer 0 0.05 and the thickness of the first layer is 2.5 then log 10 this value is p0 is 70 37 del p is 38.1 divided by 37 then plus 0.1 for the second layer second layer thickness is 8 meter then log 10 P0 is 79 plus 19.95 divided by 79. Then for the third layer, it is 0 0.06, thickness is 8 meter, and then log 10, 147 plus 9.9 .9 divided by 147. Then for the third layer, 0 0.03 thickness of that layer in up to the influence zone is 6.5 then the log 10 this is 212.25 plus 6.14 divided by 212.25 so the settlement are 38.43 plus 78.23 plus 13.59 plus 2.41 total is 132.66 millimeter okay so and the corrections factors so the first one is the rigidity So, the rigidity correction factor is 0 0.8, then the depth which was taken which was determined as 0 0.98 and the pore water pressure nothing is mentioned. So, I can take as I mentioned that 0 0.7 is a reasonable value. So, for the pore water pressure. it is 0 0.7 is taken, it is a normally consolidated clay. So, uh, Q c or S c corrected is equal to 132.66 into rigidity is 0 0.8, depth correction factor is 0 0.98 into 0 0.7. So, that is equal to 72.8 millimeter. So, S total corrected is 8.2 plus 72.8. So, that is equal to 81 millimeter and the permissible value of the settlement of wrapped resting on this clay, except this is this type of clay is given as per IS code is 100 millimeter. So, which is less than 100 millimeter and that is safe. Okay, so, here the dimension that I have chosen and I started with a minimum uh, both side dimension 1 meter that is required uh, for your design because from the column edge I have taken only up to the 1 meter. So, and that is a reasonable dimension that I have taken 
up to the edge of the column uh, foundation from the center of the edge column to the edge of the foundation I have taken 1 meter. So, further reduction uh, uh, is not recommended and the value settlement value is clo quite close to 100 millimeter. So, so that is why the dimension though it is over safe in the bearing, but the as per settlement the dimension that I have chosen is reasonable if you look at this settlement value which is 81 is the total settlement which is on the permissible is 100 millimeter. So, which is reasonable. So, this is the total uh, design of a wrap foundation again I am talking about the design means I am saying that design means the dimension and the depth of foundation I am talking. So, here the depth of foundation is 1.5 meter dimension of the raft is 12.5 cross 12.5 and which is given reasonable value. And I have mentioned that if uh, nothing is mentioned E value is given in if E value is not given in the clay problem then I can take 700 or 750 Cu uh, for the normally consolidated clay. Similarly, for the uh, sand also I can use this chart I have given this chart also. So, I can use this chart from where I if the SPT value is available from there also I can get this N value we can use this chart these N are corrected SPT value. And, and few things I want to mention that for the sandy soil I can use the in situ test uh, data uh, because as I mentioned they are the uh, in situ testing uh, uh, that we can do and which is uh, useful for the sandy soil, but for the clay soil I can uh, determine the uh, bearing capacity and the settlement based on the um, properties that you are get uh, properties of the soil sample that you are getting from the field because with the undisturbed soil sample you can collect from the field then you will take it to the uh, lab and then you will uh, do the test as a unconsolidated undrained UEU test or the unconfined compressive stain in the lab or I can do the field vein shear test in the field to get the undrained shear strength and that the shear strength I can use to determine the bearing capacity and the settlement calculation. So, next one that I will solve uh, another type of problem that till now I have discussed that your load is not eccentric not inclined. Okay. So, the load that we are talking about which is acting on the center of the footing and which is totally vertical. Now, what will happen if my loading is, is eccentric as well as inclined or eccentric or inclined either any of them or both. Okay. So, I have chosen uh, the same problem that I have discussed in lecture 13 during the uh, bearing capacity calculation for by using various methods. So, a rectangular footing of size 3 meter cross 6 meter uh, it is uh, depth of foundation is 1 meter it is on C5 soil the water table at a great depth. So, that is why water table effect is not incorporated here, but if the water table is there then you know how to incorporate that before I have solved as that uh, water table effect problem also. The unit weight of the soil is 18 kilo Newton per meter cube a 4000 kilo Newton load is acting on a footing on the footing with an angle of 15 degree to the vertical and eccentric in the direction of width by 15 centimeter. C is 50 kPa and phi is 20 and determine the factor of safety against bearing and sliding also. So, what is sliding? I will explain that. So, here because your loading is not uh, perfectly vertical, it is inclined. So, a horizontal component will come as uh, in addition to the vertical component. So, vertical components we have to use for the bearing check and the horizontal component we have to use for the sliding check. Because when your say uh, that this is now in this case your if this is the foundation base now the loading is if this is the center. So, loading is making an angle 15 degree with the vertical. So, what will happen this uh, load has 
two components. One is the similar to if this is the loading, one is the horizontal component, one is the vertical component. This is the H horizontal component, this is the V. So, your H is equal to if this is the P is load is acting P sin alpha. Here, this angle if this angle is alpha, which is equal to 15 degree, and V will be equal to P cos alpha. Okay. So, this V I will use for the bearing capacity check and H I will use for the sliding check, because when you are, there is a horizontal flows force is acting into the foundation. So, there is a possibility that this because of this horizontal force foundation can slide along this phase. Okay. So, that slide also I have to check. So, I will discuss these things and then what I am doing uh, and another uh, that I will use the various available bearing capacity expression and see then where I will use uh, B or the total width, where I will use the effective width, because all the uh, bearing capacity expression are not giving the same thing. So, we have to be uh, very carefully handle them. So, that is why I have chosen this problem, where it is inclined as well as eccentric. Now, in case of eccentric, as I mentioned that if the loading is uh, say eccentric, eccentric means here uh, if I am talking about this is your footing is, if this is the center, then your load is acting here, not at the center. So, this is eccentric say uh, as a say value of E. Okay. So, now there is a one thing that uh, how it can be uh, simulate that if a uh, loading is acting here say, but additional to there is a moment is also acting. Okay. That we can represent by this P with an eccentric loading and the E value will be m by p. So, now here in this problem directly E value is given, but in another way that your load is given which is acting in the uh, on the foundation vertical load p as well as the moment is also given. In that case you have to convert it to in this form that means your E value is moment by this p. So, that will be the E value. And another thing is that, uh, so when you are apply a eccentric load, then your distribution of stress below the face of the, uh, below the base of the footing is not uniform. It will, because here it is expected as the load is acting this side though, though your uh, stress at the right side will be more compared to the left side. So, thus your stress distribution will be something like this. Okay. And I have mentioned this thing that uh, then there is a possibility that this uh, stress distribution can be negative also and we do not want that negative one. So, that is why we have to keep our E value is less than equal to B by 6 or E value is less than equal to L by 6. Okay. So, if the because here it is mentioned eccentricity in the width direction. So, then mean it will be B by 6. If eccentricity in the length direction, this will be L by 6. Okay. Now, eccentricity can be in the width direction, can be in the length direction or it can be in the both. Okay. So, that is why if I draw this uh, diagram. So, this diagram is uh, uh, valid if your E is less than B by 6. Okay. So, if you say this is the width okay. and if I draw this diagram, then this diagram is valid for E is equal to B by 6. Okay, this stress diagram. So, this is q max, this is q mean okay. and here q mean 
is equal to 0. So, that means, here this is the, uh, so eccentricity 0 and up to that we will allow. So, now another condition may occur that it is like this also. Okay? So, that means, it will in the opposite direction it is, so this is the positive, this is the negative. So, it is valid uh, if it is happen if E is greater than b by 6, but we will not uh, in this particular uh, design of course, we will not consider this one. So, we will design it for either this one or this one, okay. but you can design the foundation if the E value is greater than b by 6, but that procedure is not included in this course. Okay. So, this is the part of the advanced foundation engineering, but here in this course, we will consider that we will not allow any load beyond this b by 6 okay, or l by 6. So, I will we will consider design under this condition. So, another one if in the plan, if it is the one way eccentricity, suppose this is your width direction and this is your length direction. Okay. So, in the here it is mentioned it is in the length direction some eccentricity is there uh, sorry width direction. So, with the width direction this will be the value say E x by b because if, if I talking about the width direction. So, this is also a value say E x by b and this direction also a point this will be E y by L and here also some point which is also E y by L. Okay. So, specifically as I mentioned that I can uh, if you use within this zone, then there will be no negative stress in the foundation within this zone. So, the specifically I can say if you put your foundation if it is two way eccentricity that this port these two coin points and so it is a diamond shape. So, this is this a shape is called the carn. Okay. So, if you place your foundation within the carn, then there will be no negative force will allow. Uh, will happen and you can use these expression because in that case because when you are your loading is eccentric your width and the length of the foundation that will also change. Now, instead of b I will use b dash. So, b dash will be b minus 2 e x and l dash will be l minus 2 e a y. So, that means either if one way eccentricity one way only in b direction, then this will be b dash will be equal to b minus 2 e x and l dash will be l. Okay. So, and if it is in l direction, then b dash will be equal to b and L dash will be L minus 2 E x. If it is both direction, then it will be the expression. Okay. And finally, our effective area, this is called effective area is equal to B dash and L dash if it is in eccentricity in width direction, then it will be b dash into l. If eccentricity in the length direction, then it will be b into l dash. If eccentricity in the both direction, it will be b dash into l dash. Okay. So, this way I can uh, design the foundation. So, next class I will design uh, this foundation under this load that is mentioned in the problem 
and I will use all the available bearing capacity expression and then we will find which method is uh, giving what value and how I will implement these things in the um, corrections that is the shape correction, depth correction, eccentricity correction and because in the all the methods this uh, application of this eccentricity and the incline are not same in the correction factor. So, that uh, those things I will explain in detail uh, in the next class. Thank you.